Almost all giving that almost all humans offer on this planet to one another brings with them the gift of what they've offered and another message that says, I do this for you for I see you cannot do it for yourself. And that's why they're not all that grateful. That's why so often they receive and they receive and they receive and they receive the stuff that you're giving them and they become more and more demanding and more and more entitled and more and more because they still don't have what they really want, which is their own connection to source energy. And it is not satisfying in any way, not ever, ever, ever to be the recipient of someone else's intention. Satisfaction comes only from you having an intention and you lining up with your intention, which means it's an energy based thing first and foremost, and whatever follows on the streams of that next, you see. So you can't give enough to someone that they will really be a happy recipient of it if they have not first received the gift of understanding their own value, their own worthiness, their own ability to receive, you see. And you can't teach that to someone else until you've got it for yourself. And there's so many people who use the words, the words in the music don't match. They use the words, I'm abundant and therefore I want to give to you, but they're in a compensating sort of attitude. They're giving out of guilt. They're doing so well that they give out of guilt or they're doing so well or they give out of pity or out of worry or out of awareness of someone's plight. You see, you cannot uplift another when you are aware of their plight. Their inner being is not aware of their plight. Their inner being is aware of what the plight caused them to ask for. And their inner being is focused upon who they really are. Their inner being is always focused upon where they're going, the path of least resistance to where they're going. So sometimes you get tuned in, tapped in, turned on, and you are the key component in being the cooperative component that helps this person to receive something that they want. But you will never feel that way if they are not truly in the receiving mode. And when they are truly in the receiving mode and you're tuned in, tapped in, turned on, and you're the one that offers them something, you'll have a moment where they will feel the wholeness of who you are and they will feel the wholeness of who they are. And they will not feel like they now owe something to you. They will understand that it was the dance of the universe because you understand it, you see. Humans want to gather together their piles of goodies, their piles of abundance, and then to, in different degrees, they want to utilize them that's all a wonderful thing we just want you to know that this pie of abundance is growing exponentially in perfect proportion to the desires that are bouncing out of the contrast that people are living and every single person has their ownership stake in this vortexual pie but if you feel like they don't have an ownership stake and you're wanting to share your ownership stake what's that saying oh yeah I'm tuned in tapped in turned on and I'm prosperous and I've got ownership stake in the abundance pile. But I see that you are not doing quite so well. So here, have a little taste of my pie. Not too much, not too much. Have a little taste of my pie. And they say, thank you. Thank you. They don't feel much satisfaction from that. They might feel a little temporary relief because you bailed them out of something, but their void isn't being filled. Their void can only be filled when they understand their ownership stake in the abundance pie. Yes. And for myself, how can I open to the great abundance that there is for me? Now you're asking the question that we're wanting you to ask. Finally, it gets to it. What was all that crap about helping others? <laughs> because you feel like you have to kind of pay the price. People often say, I want to win the lottery and I'll share, I'll share, I'll share a lot of it. In fact, I'll give most of it away. I just want to win the lottery. So we're happy to get to your question. What is it again? How can I open myself to the big abundance that there's for me? Because I have abundance. Let's get in a clear, sure way. How can I allow and receive? Yeah, those are good words. We want to hear it like you mean it. Abraham. Abraham. I want to open myself like... Ah. Ah. <laughs> Abraham, I know. I know it's there for me. I want to let it in and 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 let it in. And we say, can you hear how your question is keeping you from letting it in? Because your question comes from the premise that you're not letting it in. You can't get there from there. How can you get there? By appreciating the abundance that you have. I'm loving this moment of clarity. Oh, I love, love, love what I get to see right here and now. Oh, did you hear that? Did you see that appreciation of the abundance that is flowing into your experience? That's the way you let more of it in by acknowledging what's already coming in, not by looking for the part of it that hasn't come in yet. 
That made a lot of sense, didn't it? Yeah. I went to this seminar and every question that I asked, they didn't really let me even finish my question. It was like I was just standing in the wrong place, no matter what I asked for. It's like I needed to be there before I could get what I needed. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You got to be there. You got to find the vibrational version of what you want. And then the action details of it will fill in. So you got to feel abundance before money shows up. Really? How can I feel abundance before money shows up? Lots of air, lots of beauty, lots of clarity, lots of good feeling, lots of vitality, abundance of so many things showing themselves to you. Whew. So many beautiful, beautiful things flowing. Esther was in her living room in Texas the other day, walked into the living room and she saw a giant centipede, a giant poisonous. That's what the picture said. <laughs> centipede. She had never seen one up close before and it wasn't that close, but it was moving fast. It has a lot of legs and it can really move fast. And so she watched it moving across her living room and she thought, I bet you'd like to be outside and I know I'd like you to be outside <laughs> so she got her dustpan on a stick and her broom Esther can actually move faster than the centipede even though she doesn't have as many legs and she got right in front of it and it must not see very well and it just climbed right into her dustpan and she took it outside and said born free <laughs> as she set it free into the bushes and then she came back in and she thought I wonder what that centipede came to tell me because everything is a cooperative component for some reason she felt so friendly toward it oh it was so beautiful have you ever seen one they're bright bright red Ooh, they're just beautiful and so different from almost any other creature on the planet and so she googled its meaning and it means abundance and Esther said I know I know you're here to confirm what I already know in other words everything around you is confirming what you know imagine seeing a giant it was this long a giant it was as big around as her finger it had big black legs lots of them she didn't count them but she's pretty sure there were a hundred of them and she didn't feel fear or alarm. She saw its beauty and its speed and she cared about its well-being and she put it outside and then she looked it up and its message to her said, all is well in our world, isn't it? There is abundance. There is abundance. Now, some might say, oh, Esther's stretching pretty far for this. She wasn't stretching at all. She was just acknowledging someone else coming as evidence to tell her what she already knows. You say so when you know it the evidence just comes and comes and comes and comes and comes now some might say yikes I just assume it not come to me in the form of a giant poisonous centipede why not don't you want it to come in any way it can come don't you want abundance to rain down around you don't you want the abundance of clarity and abundance of love and abundance of balance and vitality abundance of richness in terms of friendship isn't this just an abundant divinely abundant environment in which you live and isn't every segment of your life full of enough for you to acknowledge like that do you really need to reach somewhere that you're not yet to feel that because if you need to reach somewhere that you're not yet in order to feel that then you're not ever going to get to where you want to be you got to find it vibrationally where you are and then it will flesh out in infinite ways did we get there just a little i want a little trick that reminds me my worthiness well earlier today in fact our first conversation our friend wanted to know he wanted proof but we don't think that many people would accept a poisonous centipede as proof of anything wanted but Esther did oh, so beautiful you should have seen it and so fast and so sure of itself and such a cooperative component you just got to decide how you're gonna look at the world and you just got to find what you're looking for wherever you're looking 
But when you've decided that your world and where you're looking is giving you a different message than what you want, you can't get where you want to be from there. You got to find a way to see it like you want it to be. You say. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah.